All right, it's Friday, so it's the Rapid Fire Friday. Coming at you a little later because we wanted to see uh, what was going to happen with the NBA draft. But Trevor Valise, Joey Wagner, let's go, guys. Happy Friday. Trevor, hit the music. Let's start. All right, we'll start out with the topic of the day so far. Do you like the fit for Kofi with the Utah Jazz? Joey, I think this is interesting because Utah is like one of the only NBA teams that kind of uses these traditional low post centers. Of course, Gobert is kind of a, a unicorn in the NBA. He's in these trade rumors like Kofi's not going to replace Rudy Gobert. Uh, but they had Hassan Whiteside on the team last year, Udoka Azubuke. And, and Azubuke is kind of the guy that Kofi gets compared to the most. He's actually younger than Kofi, even though he's been in the NBA uh, for a little bit. But I think Azubuke is kind of the Kofi model. And if if they value guys that are kind of these traditional low post guys, maybe you can find a two-way deal and kind of add his depth there. So I find it interesting. I, he just hasn't landed the two-way deal. So I don't know how long he'll be with Utah, if he'll earn a spot with Utah, but they have valued post presences like this. So I think that's maybe why Kofi is deciding to go there. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think when we look at like the best fit, it's the best fit to get a two-way deal to start, right? This isn't the best fit to be a starter or an immediate backup. It's the best fit to find your way onto a roster. And they've shown the way that they build their roster that they're not turning their nose up at a traditional big man. And I thought Brad Underwood nailed it last week when he said, look, Kofi's not for everybody in the NBA. I mean, it, Maybe some people were taken aback to hear that. You probably shouldn't have been. That's just the reality of it. Is there is a role for him, but it's not a role on every team in, in the NBA. So if Utah is one of those teams that values that, that's fine. Jeremy, we need to say the whole he should have come back. He, he would have been better off coming back to Illinois. Come on now. Like that makes sense financially if you want to argue the NIL aspect. The age 23 season of Kofi Coburn at Illinois was not going to ch drastically change how he was viewed by NBA teams. He wasn't going to come back and turn into Mark Williams. That's just not who Kofi Coburn is. So I get it. it financially, you could have made an argument. Basketball-wise, th this was, this was the, the decision that made the most sense. Yeah, I thought it was a risky financial decision. Right. Um, because he, he could have decided to come back to Illinois, made a million, maybe a little bit more than that. I don't know. But like he could have made more money, I, I think, this year, guaranteed coming back. But he just decided that wasn't the most important thing for him, that that he just wanted to start his pro career and that coming back to college was not what he wanted to do. Uh, I think Illinois has, has moved on beautifully uh, and they're hoping Kofi does really well here. But um, he decided that that wasn't the most important thing he wanted to be a pro and he's going to make good money if he wants to, if he wants to go overseas or he gets a two way deal. Um, so he, he wanted to bet on himself and, and kudos to him for that. But yeah, there was some financial riskiness here, but, but Kofi should have a, a long professional career. We just don't know where that will be. Illinois football added Calvin Smith to the class of 2023 this week. What do you make of this latest commitment? I think it was a good get by Illinois. You're seeing them add uh, the outside linebacker position, guys, has really just it went from we can make it work with Owen Carney and Isaiah Gay. And they had good seasons. They were important to the defense. But you're seeing them put their thumbprint on it. And Calvin Smith is very much that. I don't know, Jeremy, that I came into June thinking maybe they'll take two edge rushers. But they did. That means they like the two edge rushers that they took. And if you want to go bigger picture, it's another position you can put a bow on and move to 24. And that's a big deal as we sit here nearing the end of June. Yeah, if I look at this class so far, Joey, I, I think he's a top five get uh, in this class. I, I think Caden Fagan and Jamarian Harkless are kind of the headliners. I really like TJ McMillan. Rico Jackson's offer list probably puts him in that top five as an offensive lineman. Uh, but Calvin Smith had a really long power five offer list. Uh, some impressive schools came down to Illinois, Pitt, and Rutgers. And, and those are teams you'd like to be able to beat. And Illinois was. Uh, but the thing when I turn on his film is – I love his first step. Uh, he's got great acceleration off the line of scrimmage, which is hard to teach. It's what Seth Coleman has. It's what Isaiah Gay has. Uh, and then you compare that, you pair that with, you know, a frame at 6'4", 6'3", 235 pounds. He's going to have to add strength. 
Um, he's he's going to need probably some time to do that. Uh, but I really like his burst, and he, he's got an array of moves already. And he comes from a good program down at Akoe, where his teammate Zachary Tobe just took an official visit, a three-star defensive back. Uh, so I, I think this is a good fit, and I think he and Jared Beatty uh, give you good speed edge rushers uh, to have in this system after Seth Coleman or, or behind Seth Coleman over the next couple of years. And then you have guys like Gabe Akis and maybe Mason Bergen plays this role a little bit and Pat Farrell, who are kind of more the defensive end, strong side defensive end uh, spot. So I agree with you, Joey. I think Kevin Kane has done an unbelievable job in the outside linebackers room, including Alec Bryant, the Virginia Tech transfer, former four-star prospect. I think running back, outside linebacker, offensive line, recruiting is going really well for Illinois. And you're winning power five battles, Jeremy. Yeah. Like that is, that's the constant we're seeing for the most part. I mean, it's now the closer to the rule and the exception in this class. And that's, that's a good sign of the process moving forward. What's your reaction to Illinois drawing Syracuse for the big 10 ACC challenge? I thought solid. Trevor, uh, you know, Duke or North Carolina would have been the big ones. I, I can't blame ESPN for North Carolina, Indiana at Assembly Hall. That's going to be uh, unbelievable. I think Indiana, when when they're going well, is uh, the best atmosphere uh, in, in the Big Ten. So that's going to be a lot of fun. The two favorites in each of those leagues, two teams that wh whether you think Indiana is a top 10 team or not, probably going to be in the top 10 of preseason polls or top 15. Uh, Duke, Ohio State. Okay. I mean, Illinois Duke played a couple years ago. I, I think that's meh. Uh, Virginia, Michigan makes sense. But I think the whole point here is the ACC depth stinks. I, I, it just stinks right now. And, you know, Illinois, Syracuse, Syracuse hasn't been a top five ACC team since the first year they joined the ACC about eight years ago. Uh, Michigan State got Notre Dame. Like Michigan State's still a huge draw nationally. Iowa got Georgia Tech. Wisconsin got Wake after winning the Big Ten title. So I thought Illinois, Florida State made a ton of sense. And I don't get why Florida State, Purdue is happening for a fourth time in five years. I would have loved that matchup, length, athleticism. But I do think Syracuse, Joey, is a, is a good test for Illinois because it's something really different that you're probably not going to see in the Big Ten with their zone, their length. But I also think around this time in the schedule, it might be nice for Illinois to get a win against a high major team because we don't know how it's going to go in Las Vegas. We expect some some choppiness early on. And Syracuse loses three of its top four scores. The program has not been as good uh here recently under Jim Beheim as, as his career is waning here. So I think it's a it's an interesting matchup. Two programs with some similarities over their history. Obviously the orange factor here, but I think it's solid. Um, but I, I think in the grand scheme of thing, I think it's a, it's a good matchup for Illinois to get prepared for what could be a, a second round NCAA tournament matchup. Yeah, it's not sexy. I, I mean, it's not, Hey, North Carolina is coming to Champaign or Hey, Duke's coming. To, it's not that and, or Florida state. I think that's a really good, uh, ideal matchup, Jeremy, but it is what it is. Look, we talked about this before that. Hey, we're all going to open up preseason rankings and see this, the same line for Illinois, right? Lost X number of scores, lost starters, this, that, and the other. This is kind of the first, like, quote unquote, domino to fall. When you understand how people are perceiving Illinois, right or wrong, people can argue that that's fine. But how the perception of Illinois is nationally with a new roster, with the expectation to rely on freshmen, it just is what it is. But I don't, I wouldn't think Brad Underwood is like furious about this, right? I, I think he would have enjoyed having that marquee home, you know, blow the roof off the place matchup that Carolina or Duke would have been. But to your point, I think he might be, part of him might be excited to see something different in, in Syracuse and be able to throw these, these young guys. I mean, hey, Sky Clark, enjoy the Syracuse zone, buddy. Like, enjoy figuring it out. And, and Jaden Epps, enjoy figuring it out. And I, Part of him probably is giddy in that because he's kind of a, a basketball mind in that way. And you know what the, the zone can present? Uh, a lot of opportunities for guys who are supposed to be skilled for front court players. Dane Danger, this could be his game, right? Where, where that pinch post, uh, he can operate well, kind of be a distributor there. Ty Rogers in that, you know, Matthew Meyer. Uh, could certainly do that. And Coleman Hawkins, like I think Illinois has a roster that can that can really dice it up, but it's going to take, um, you know, 
a team that's ready for it, prepared for it. And, and, you know, that zone can really throw you off kilter. Uh, Can a younger Illinois team with a bunch of new pieces handle it? I I think it's a, I think it's a good test and it's, it's still Syracuse, man. They're still made some NCAA tournament runs here in recent years, even if they're not uh, the national power they once were. Trevor clip the Dane danger comment and save that for good or bad come November 29th. The Dane Danger breakout game against Syracuse in the pinch post. Oh, Book boy. it. Save it, Trevor. Save it all. I'm archiving it. Don't worry. Give me a non-Illinois Big Ten football hot take for this upcoming season. I, I, I know I had thought about this earlier, and I have to say it out loud, and I don't know that I'm ready to do that. I think Nebraska is going to finish ahead of Purdue in the standings. Uh, they've added a lot to their roster. Everyone's going to talk about all the close games that Nebraska lost and shouldn't have lost. Like it was truly mind boggling that Nebraska lost some of those games last year. I don't know how many times Jeremy is going to be able to, to screenshot the deflated Scott Frost on the sidelines uh, picture, but Purdue loses. I mean, I don't Carl Aftis is a big loss. Rondale Moore is a big loss. Like I, Aiden O'Connell, he's probably the best quarterback in the West right now. It, I, I would say uh, one of the top two, so you, you do return him, but I don't know. Nebraska's got that weird, they really need to do this, and maybe they do it. And I, I don't know that it'll work, but I think they're going to finish ahead of Purdue. Uh, they lost Rondale two years ago, Joey. They lost David Bell this year. I just, I just want to throw that out there before somebody comments on it. Um, my hot take, Nebraska won't be good. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm zigging while you're zagging. Um Listen, they'll improve, but that's because they were three and nine and lost so many close games. So maybe they make a bowl game for the first time and Scott Frost saves his job as Nebraska has lowered and lowered and lowered its expectations over the last decade. I'm not diminishing the additions they've made via the transfer portal. Like Marcus Washington's a great talent. Casey Thompson and Chuba Purdy are, are interesting talents at quarterback, but they've had a talented quarterback. Like Adrian Martinez is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the Big Ten the last three, four years, and they didn't get much out of him. Their problem has been defense, and they just lost two of their best defenders, Can Taylor Britt and JoJo Doman, and they took steps forward last year. And I know they have some really talented transfers coming in, but then their other problem is coaching. Like, that hasn't changed. I know they've changed some assistants, but they still got the same guy at the top. Uh, and they still have had a talent problem. Like the NFL draft has not been kind to Nebraska. So I know they have some of these names, some of these transfers. They had to, to try and save his job. Maybe they make a bowl game, but they're over under seven and a half. I I don't get that. I, I don't I don't get that. So I, I'm going with Nebraska is going to be under that because every year it's oh Nebraska will turn around. They have this talent, this talent. I think they get hyped up when I don't think their talent level is all that different than, than schools like Purdue, Illinois, Minnesota. What is the, the benchmark that saves his job this year? I think it's a bowl game, but I think it should be more than that. I think the expectations should be higher at Nebraska. I think you got I think it's more of a feeling, Joe. Like if you're six and six, but went, you know, three and six in the Big Ten, is is that a guy you want to bring back? I, I don't think so. Um I, I think Nebraska should have higher expectations, but I think it's turning into a hard job. Um, I don't think it should be as hard as it is, but th- I think they have struggled adjusting to the Big Ten. And what has worked, in, especially in their division, I don't know how long divisions will be a thing. They got to get better up front. Their, their line play is not good enough. Their defense is not good enough. To Jeremy's point, the fact that it is a legitimate hot take to say Nebraska will finish ahead of Purdue should make every Nebraska fan cringe. Okay, what's your favorite basketball jersey number choice from this week's reveal? 55 for Sky Clark. Easy, slam dunk. That's awesome. That That's a fun jersey number because we see him in – I just feel like 55 on its own would be cool. But we've seen Sky Clark. Like, could he bring the baggy look back and wear 55? Because that's like the perfect deal here. That, that would be awesome. Yeah, you know, basketball numbers, like, I don't know if, like, people identify as much with some of those because you can see their faces, right? Like, football jersey numbers, you have to know, especially you, me, Joey. Like, we got to get to know these guys by their numbers because we can't see their faces. But 
I feel like 55 is a number that is like identifiable, like, and, and that people love to wear. Like, I don't know if Andre, Andre Cabello was never owning 11, right? I don't know. That was never going to be um, the case or five, he had five, right? Um, he was never going to own five with Darren Williams and all of that. Um, I do think Sky Clark can own 55. I also love zero for Terrence Shannon. I love the single digits. So I love um, even Sincere Harris going one, which is a, a number that has been good for Illinois here in recent years. And I also love that, that Jaden Epps went with the number of the guy who recruited him in Chester Frazier, uh, who wore three along with Brandon Paul. Uh, but I'll go Terrence Shannon zero uh, to compliment your, your Sky Clark, because I, I love a guard going with the zero and it's, we've only had zeros for the last decade, but Illinois had a lot of zeros uh, on the roster. Sam Maniscalco, Brandon Podjimski, uh, Sam McLaurin, and Alan Griffin, all or zero. So either guys who have transferred in or transferred out, Terrence Shannon transferred in, take zero. Where's the love for 42? 42 is a fun one for Dane Danger as well. I like a big man with a big number. Yeah, I don't mind Maybe that. Maybe you'll see that breakout game, Jeremy against Syracuse. The Jeremy Warner special. Sell like hotcakes after Syracuse, after he has 10 points and nine assists, Joey. Zero is great. Double zero, terrible. Ooh. I don't know why anyone goes with double zero. Joey did a great feature on Caleb Griffin traveling to dozens of other sporting events. What is a non-Illinois sporting event you would love to either attend or cover that you've never had the chance to? I'm going to take covering out of this because uh, I I just, I want to go to a game and enjoy it. Like there's some things I'd love to do. I'd love to go to an SEC football game on a bye week some year, like whether that's the Grove, uh, I'd love to go see my team in the world series and, and pay for it and all of that. Um, I'd probably go the masters though. I'm not a huge golf fan, but everyone who goes there says you have to do it at some point. So I went with the masters over like the Olympics or premier league game, something like that. Uh, but I'll go with the Masters just to just to be a part of that. Plus cheap food, right? It's not a bad thing. Is cheap food there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's like oh, dour pimento sandwiches or something like that. Yeah, everything is cheap food-wise there, uh, to make up for everything else you're paying for. All uh, right, load up the car, the Illini acquire road trip this summer. Oh, we, we do have to take out like any of our teams in a championship is obviously going to be number one. Like, that, that's a slam dunk. Uh, any of the four majors, I think, would be awesome. The Masters would probably be at the top of the list. I, I'm with you. Take out coverage. Like, I don't want to work when I do this, which leads me to the Kentucky Derby. Give me enough mint juleps. Let me have a good time there. I'll, I'll give me a, a dress up in a nice suit. You don't have to walk a lot, like maybe not as much as the a golf mat, like uh, major. I don't you don't have I, to walk much. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Th that would be like the hard sell for me on a golf major. That's a, it's like, this kind of a lot of walking unless you just camp out by a tee or like in the grandstand, I guess. It, if you were at, if you were at the Masters, would you be one of those guys yelling, "Get in the hole"? I don't know. No, because you you can't drink and yell at the same time so i don't know that i would be able to balance the, the time you know your strengths joey so the kentucky derby and followed up by one of the four majors with the masters at the top if they let me dress down i do the kentucky derby but the the 10 out of 10 suit game i don't know how i feel about that at a sporting event yeah and you gotta wear it you gotta find a cool hat i don't know if i can rock those hats oh you'll be all right <laughs> You can grab it wet, walk a golf course that whole freaking way and get a hat. Yeah, it's outside. It's in it's in Georgia in the April. It's a beautiful. It's all the walking. <laughs> Brad Underwood didn't turn you on to walking, huh? No, I had blisters for a month. I hated it. As God is my witness, I will quit. All right, and finally. Time for a food question to wrap us up. It's National Ice Cream Day this weekend. What is your favorite ice cream brand and or flavor? Is today the day we find out Joey hates ice cream? No. Look at me. No. There's no way that's the answer is yes. Chocolate chip cookie dough all the way. Just it's the best because you get those nice little I just little treats of cookie dough in there. It just makes your day. It just really makes your entire, entire day. So I, I look forward to your avocado or something healthy, Jeremy. 
<laughs> healthy ice cream. That makes a lot of sense. Really some the closest thing to healthy ice cream. Should, should we do a quick draft, Trevor? Can we do a, like a, a three round draft uh, to see yeah. where we go? Yeah, um, we can. So, Joey, you took a good one. Uh, chocolate chip uh, cookie dough would be high on my board. Mint chocolate chip uh, is my number one. You get the creamy with the chocolate. Yeah, that, that's that's working for me. So, mint chocolate chip is my number one. Trev, who are you taking? I would have gone cookie dough. I'll pivot to cookies and cream because I like Oreos. So, I'll take that. But I would have otherwise taken cookie dough if I had started in round one. Trev, we'll give you the we'll give you the snake pick here, Trev. Um, I'm more of a like a vanilla flavor profile guy than a chocolate flavor profile guy, so I'm gonna go like birthday cake, Ooh. or or can I do cheesecake slash birthday cake, or are those two entirely different flavors? I, I'll allow it. I, right. I don't know enough about the difference. Just, just some flavors. kind of like cakey vanilla one. <clears throat> uh, I will go with pecan. Butter pecan ice cream. I've become a fan of that in my older age. I don't know if that means I'm an old, but butter pecan, like pecan pie, I've become a fan of. And you just put that in ice cream flavor. Uh, I will go there. Joey, what you got? The pecan, the, the pecan is not why you turned into an old. There's a, a list of other reasons. It's not the ice cream. What uh, are the other I, reasons? I will, <laughs> oh, what do we? That's another rapid fire. That, that'll be next week. Snake. Snake draft for why Warner's an old next week on Rapid Fire Friday. Like vanilla bean. Like there, there's a very distinct difference between vanilla and vanilla bean. So vanilla beans answer. All right, you got another pick. Oh, the cookies and cream is a good one, Trevor. That that really threw my whole board out of whack. Um Rocky Road. I, I like Rocky Road. All right. I'm like between two of the just no one's most famous. Right. Um, so my son would kill me if I just didn't take old school vanilla. I, I think vanilla is really good and you can put whatever you want on it. If you want to add a little bit of flavor, uh, I like chocolate, but I, I do think vanilla ice cream, you put that on cake, you put it on a brownie, anything. It's got a lot of versatility. So uh, not my number one pick, but an elite role player, uh, vanilla ice cream. It's not my go-to, but I feel like I can't end the draft without picking some kind of chocolate ice cream. That seems heinous. I guess I'll just pick chocolate ice cream. <laughs> uh, did no one went with Neapolitan? Uh, did anybody no. else just leave the the strawberry side of the Neapolitan carton empty? Like you just didn't yeah. touch it? Neapolitan's fine. Should have been taken. That's one yeah. that probably should have gone. Uh, well, salted did. caramel. Is one I considered that's not bad, like the Ben and Jerry's ones that have like a little like core of caramel in it or something, those are pretty good. I am kind of glad we didn't go too far in the Ben and Jerry's well. And I like Ben and Jerry's, but that, there's a lot going on there, and, and I, I feel like there's too much, too many options. It's good, just not Moose, for a draft. Moose tracks is kind of a, a big one we didn't take. If you ever had watermelon ice cream, that sounds awful. I love watermelon. I like ice cream. Those two things together do not sound good. I remember growing up, there used to be a banana ice cream, and it was awesome. And then yeah. all of a sudden, it went away. I don't good. know what happened to it. Okay, it just put a banana on my ice cream. cream. No, no. We need Briars. Briars, if you're listening, bring back banana ice cream. <laughs> all right. That'll do it for us on the Rapid Fire Friday. Everybody have a great week, weekend, and we'll chat to you next week right here on the Line Inquirer YouTube.